The RT Tree View web part is used to navigate to different assets within the overall asset database that we call the module database and then passes arguments to uh, other web parts. That's basically its function. Let me demonstrate. One of the things that we can pass arguments to is a, uh, a trend. So for example, let me show you this trend. Here's a trend that's currently looking at a tag. As I switch in the module database uh, nodes here that are represented in the tree view control, as I switch, we're passing a list of pi tags represented as aliases within this module database. We're passing that list to the trend. So as I switch from one to the next, from one module in the module database, as shown by this tree view control or tree view web part, we're switching. Uh, to a different set of tags to send over. So that's one of the things that we can do with it. It's one of the navigation tools. It can pass lists of tags. Uh, let me show you another thing that it can pass. Let me go ahead and restore this. This is a document library, just a regular document library called Operating Instructions that's, um, that I created in SharePoint. And it's set up with a filter such that when I uh, click on a node in the tree view control. What it will do is it will pass the name of that node over to this SharePoint document library and by doing that it filters out and shows me the operating instructions I want. So you know you don't have to go out and look up operating instructions for a particular node or asset and this asset might be oh it may be a, a vessel, it may be a unit, etc. As soon as you choose that whatever it is that you do choose here, we're going to see the operating instructions show up in the document library. So as you can see, it's for navigation purposes. And of course, once we navigate, we, we'd like to do something with that. We'd like to pass uh, arguments over to other web parts. Now the third thing I'd like to demonstrate is fairly subtle. This is a, uh, this is a different area within my units. And each one of these pumps within this unit has a series of aliases associated with it. Now what's going to happen here is when I click on this unit right here, it's going to send the context over to this uh, web part. This is the RT Graphics web part. And you notice the context up here changed to pump 6. And if I choose pump 1, it's going to change the tags and change this pump. Uh, that's because in this case it's not it's not necessarily sending a list of tags as we saw in the trend. What it's sending is the context. The context is uh, basically the uh, notion in the module database that says, you know, here is where I am in your in your asset database. And this particular RT graphic display was created such that it would be relative to whatever context you're currently looking at. So as I go to pump one, we'll see data from pump one. As I switch to the other, the other context, we'll see those other contexts. Now I've mentioned the word module database a couple of times. It's really uh, about time that we took a look at the module database in some detail. This is the module database. It is a, a type of an asset database that we use to uh, well, to try to uh, describe uh, what um, what is available in your organization, what uh, what assets you have throughout your organization, and in the next video we'll describe in greater detail exactly the purpose of the module database. Uh, just to demonstrate what we did just a second ago, as you can see, as I switch from one pump to the other, all the different aliases. Or all of them share the same aliases, but the tags that the aliases resolve to are different. So as the context changes, the number of tags or the names of the tags that are resolved are going to be different too. Like the other RT web parts, after you add a tree view control, you have to configure it. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm in build mode here, and I'm going to go ahead and add, it's called RT tree view. And we'll just go ahead and choose Add. And it's going to be misconfigured, of course. There's nothing to see. And so let me go ahead and modify this. Now what we're going to be doing here is providing it with a path that we're going to use to go to the 
uh, the root node within the module database that we're interested in starting at. And then after we provide that, we can provide a default value for uh, the node, the alias, and the properties. So let me demonstrate. Here's where I need to specify the root node. And I think in my case, we'll choose, you know, let's choose a, um, let's choose something new we haven't seen before. We'll look at these pumps. Now these pumps are, um, they are about ten, uh, eight pumps. Each one of them has a series of aliases available. Here are the aliases. And what we'll do is we'll configure this to point to the pump area north in general and then pass these aliases over to the trend that you already see on the display. So this would be my root node. I'll click and drag. As you can see, it just drops it right into the root node field. Now, these other things, default node, properties, and aliases, this is where you specify, well, your default node is going to be where when you first land on the page which node you will select by default. That's really pretty important because if you don't have that there when you first land on the page uh, you won't see any of the references uh, past any of the tag lists or any of the the other things in the module uh, passed over to the uh, connected web parts. So here is where I could specify a list of or a, a default property or a default alias but that's optional. I don't need to provide that. I'll go ahead and say OK. And this is where I determine or I identify whether I assemble a list of tags organized under these modules, the selected module, and send it or, or make that available to connected web parts. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. Now, if you are going to be sending this as filtered data, like, for example, the way I did uh, sending it filtered data to the uh, the actual uh, document library web part, then you would need to specify here what it is you're going to send for the filter. So when I did that, I, I sent the module name. Uh, the module path would have the, you know, the slash slash server name, etc. We don't want that. We just want the module path. I'm not actually going to demonstrate it this time, but if we were to pass this filter, that's what we would use. Now, this is where we get to control how many levels within the hierarchy we get to show, how much we load, how much we display, and what the maximum are. And this right here is where you can point to some centrally located uh, icon, just an image file, that would then substitute for the normal image that you would see in our module database. So let me go ahead and show you that. I'll go ahead and choose Apply. And what we should see over here is yeah there we go this is the there is the module database uh, listing uh, that's the normal icon but you can change the icon using this field as I as I mentioned earlier so I'll go ahead and say OK and now we've configured the tree view control now of course at this point uh, there's really nothing going on uh, there's no interactions between the two uh, because I haven't set up any connections so let me go ahead and go into edit mode I'll set up a connection from the tree view side. We could do it from either side really, but I'll, I prefer doing it from the sender. We're going to provide parameters to the RT trend. And again, that doesn't do anything until we modify this and show this how to receive those parameters or which parameters to receive. In this case, yeah, here's where we set it up right here. See the um, little black lightning bolt indicates that there's a connection possible, but we haven't actually made the connection yet. So I'll go ahead and select that. I'll select the RT tree view. Now here are the different things we could retrieve. And for example, if we were um, if we were passing context, we would choose the module path. Uh, in this case, though, we're just pass we're just taking the list of aliases. So that would be the tag names that are stored as aliases. And with that configured, I'll go ahead and acknowledge. And the big finish to this would be once we select, I'll exit out of edit mode. Once we select one of these things, we should see the RT trend appears with the tags that are appropriate to that particular piece of equipment. Now here it's 
not terribly interesting. It all looks pretty much the same, but as you can see, it's it's finding different uh, different pi tags and throwing those tags over to be displayed on the RT trend. So let's take a look at a couple of other ideas. Well, this one we've already seen before, more or less. In this in this uh, situation, you would have aliases organized underneath nodes within the module structure, and using the RT tree view, you would make a connection to the RT trend such that when you click here at any one of these points, it'll send those over to the trend. So that's one that we've seen before. Now another example, we haven't seen this one demonstrated before, but uh, in addition to sending tag names, you could configure within the module database a property that points to the location of an SVG file that is used to drive this RT graphic. So you would link, you connect the RT graphic to the tree view so that the RT graphic is going to find the path to that SVG file by retrieving that from whatever you've clicked here. So it's a great opportunity to uh, basically, or it's a good, a good uh, method of um, having a whole variety of SVG files available uh, from one structure here without having to build a lot of different web part pages. So all these different SVG files would be available just using this as the uh, mechanism for um, for navigating. And then finally, we did something, a variation of this with our document library. But here's the idea that uh, you've got a list, a SharePoint list of some type, and you're getting the sort slash filter information from TreeView. So using a string, this um, we're, we're pulling a string from the module database. That string can be the name, an alias, a property, wh whatever you'd like to use to as your search criteria or your filter criteria for this list in SharePoint. So those are just three ideas. The uh, the number of uh, applications are really endless. I mean, there's there's a lot of different uh, web parts that we don't make that come from other folks that uh, are just uh, are very well suited for producing useful information. You know, based on passing things like vessel names or even uh, process data. So, uh, the as I said, the, the ideas are, are really, it's up to you how you make use of these, but these are just some ideas to get you started.